Welcome to the Voice of Triumph Ministries. We are glad to have you join us today. It is our sincerest hope as you view this message that your spirit would be lifted and your life would be transformed. Get ready to have an encounter with the Lord. Today I want to share with you a little bit as we continue on that all important subject of understanding is there life after death? Is there life after death and um, very briefly today i want to just address another aspect of that and that's taken from the book of first corinthians chapter 15. now in the book of first corinthians you would realize that um first corinthians chapter 15 in particular for those of us who are interested in finding out a little bit more about this all-important subject as to whether or not there is life after death we need to take a moment and read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the entire chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. Um, the area that I want to address specifically, though, it is the area of, or it's the concept of what is called the firstborn. The firstborn. And um, I think this is so nice because we dedicated the firstborn to the Lord, you know? And um, the Bible has much to say about firstborn. Now, I know some of you are firstborn and lastborn, you know, you are beginning and end, and I'm suffering to be so because maybe that's the blessing, that's how the Lord blessed you. But in scripture, the Bible would talk ever so often about firstborn. And firstborn, and so as we all have known, it refers to the one who opens the womb, or it's the first child that, was that, that the parents, the mom gave birth to, so the Bible calls that the firstborn. Um, the understanding with firstborn, though, is that it always sort of pointed to the fact that there were more to come. And um, so we don't, we hope <laughs> and we would think that there are more to come. <laughs> but generally speaking, generally speaking, the word first conveyed an impression that there was more to come. Um, I started off to talk about that because I want to establish um, a couple of scriptures with you, very maybe three in particular, um, three specific passages that I want to bring your attention to. And the first one is found in the book of Revelation, chapter one. Revelation, chapter one, where it talks, it makes reference to that concept of firstborn. Revelation, chapter one, verse five, and it says this. It says, and um, it says from. From Jesus Christ, John the Revelator is writing in the book of Revelation. And ever so often when we call Revelation, people get a little bit, um, start thinking, what is this all about? You begin to think that it's, it's a hard book, difficult to understand. But hear what Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says. As a matter of fact, this is the easier part of the book of Revelation to understand. And it says, he says, and from Jesus, he's given the testimony how he got the message of Revelation, the book of Revelation. He says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. So he refers to Jesus as a faithful witness. Yeah. And then he goes on and he says, and I'm reading from the King James rendering. He says, and he and the first begotten of the dead. Yeah. So he uses yeah. the term not firstborn, but he uses the term the first begotten yeah. of the dead. Yeah. And um, I go to another scripture, which is found in the book of Colossians chapter one, Colossians chapter one. And here the term firstborn is referred to. Now, it seems as though it's an oxymoron. It seems as though it's kind of contradictory because you're talking about born and you're talking about the dead. What's the connection between the two? Well, there's a major connection between the two. And um, I, I, even before I read that, I want to say to us today that life in itself is very brief. Yeah. Life in itself is very brief. And I think sometimes we make the mistake to, um, we make the mistake to think that we have all the time in the world. And before you know it, you realize, wait a minute, I'm in my 30s. And before you know it, wait, I'm in my 50s. Yeah. And then before you know it, you say, my goodness, I'm in my 70s. And therefore, life passes by very quickly. Yes. And the scripture talks about that. The Bible makes reference to that. There's a beautiful text that I have here. It's found in the book of, um, just before I read Colossians with you, it's found in the book of, um, in the book of First Peter, First Peter chapter 1. 
talks about how life could be brief. And I want you to hear me well today, because sometimes before you know it, your life could pass by so quickly. So it tells us in First Peter chapter 1, it says that, as the scripture says, people are like grass. People are like grass. My goodness, you see that? Think about it. You know those guys with the whacker and the, the brush cutter? They say people are like grass. It says their beauty is like the flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. But then it goes on to say, but the word of the Lord remains forever. The word of the Lord remains forever. So it tells us that life could be very brief. And that is why we should make the most out of life. We should love. We should be able to serve God. We should give our best because yeah. life passes by in the twinkling of an eye before yeah. you know it. Yeah. Hey, I'm celebrating 59 in the next couple of weeks yeah, from now. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Hey, so life passes by like, like that. Yeah. And therefore, that second scripture that I read with you today is from the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And hear what it says. It says, and he is, again referring to Christ, and you might be wondering, why is he talking about Christ? Why is he, this thing about the afterlife, what does Christ, what does Christ have to do with that? Well, may I say to you, he has everything to do with it. Yeah. He has yeah. every single thing to do with it. And therefore, Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 says, and he is, referring to who? Jesus. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning. Notice well, he is the beginning. And it goes on to say, he is the firstborn. And here comes that word, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might have preeminent. And here is a good place for us to recognize two things that I, and this is the area that I want to deal with specifically with you today on, is that when it comes to referring to Christ, when it comes to, it speaks of the resurrection of Christ, there are two words that are associated with his resurrection. And that is there purposefully. The first one, firstborn from the dead. And the writer is using, and God through the Holy Spirit is utilizing the concept of firstborn because you and I can identify with that. Yeah. I am not a firstborn. I'm a secondborn. I'm the, my eldest sister is a firstborn. I'm the second for my mom, nine children. So I'm a secondborn. But in this case, the Bible is talking about the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And the firstborn connotes or gives the impression that there were more to come. Yeah. There were yeah. more to come. Mm -hmm. That's the argument that scripture puts forward without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. The concept is that God used Jesus. He brought him into the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what the gospel is, by the way. Yeah. The gospel is about how Jesus came, by the way. He came. And the Bible says not only did he come and walk upon the earth, but he did three things. Number one, he died for our sins. Yeah. Secondly, he yeah. was buried for yeah. our sins. Yeah. Uh, he was buried after he died. And most individuals have no issue with that. They said, yes, Jesus came. Yes, he walked there. Yeah. And they, they said, yes, he was crucified. So people have no issue with Good Friday. Yes, he was crucified. But the third area is the area of controversy. Yeah. It is the area of argument. Mm -hmm. It is the area that many are still struggling to settle in their mind. Yes, he came. Yes, he was crucified. Yes, he was buried. But the third aspect of the gospel is not only did he come, not only was he crucified, not only was he buried, yeah. but the all important aspect is that he rose from the dead. He rose from the grave. Now, here is where it begins to connect the two parts together. The Bible says he is the first born from the dead. Notice well, I said that whenever we hear the term firstborn, with the, and, and, um, the exception is made where some individuals are first and last. We do have individuals who are the firstborn and they are the lastborn. They say, what am I talking about? They are the only child. So, so there is no second born and third born. But generally speaking, when you talk about the first born, there is an understanding something more or some more is to come. Yeah. That's the connection or that's the reference when the Bible says that Jesus, hear this well, it says Jesus is the first born and it's not just referring to the natural birth now. It says he's the first born from the dead. Yeah. And it says something. Now, you need to ask yourself the question, was Jesus the only person to be resurrected? Well, if we go back under the Old Testament, you would discover that Elijah raised the woman's son back to life. You'd realize that Elisha did the same thing. 
you'll also realize that this is an interesting one. The Bible says that when Elisha had died of a disease and they had buried him, and there came a time subsequently, he has, his body has deteriorated and so forth, and the, the, is, the nation of Israel are in war. And they had a man, a funeral to do, and they didn't have time to bury the guy. So what they did is that they threw his body into the, into the cave where Elisha, who had died of a disease, they threw his body into that cave. And to their amazement, as, as that body touched the bones, notice oh. well, they're not touching Elisha's yeah. body, they're oh, touching yeah. his bones. Yeah. The Bible says that yeah. that man, they didn't pray for him to be resurrected, but as he touched that bone, those bones, he came back to life. Yeah. And on next week, you need to tune in. You need to tune in next week because I've got something I want to share with you. I want to talk a little bit more on the God of the resurrection. Yeah. The God of the resurrection. Yeah. There are some things in there that God wants to bring out. But notice well, underneath the Old Testament, people are being raised. We, we have those examples of resurrection. Underneath the New Testament, Jesus raised the widow's son, the widow of Nain. Underneath uh, the New Testament, we see him raising his friend Lazarus, coming back to life. Not only that, Jairus, who had a daughter, who was 12 years old. The people say, don't trouble the master anymore. Jesus went, he, he raised that girl back to life. And even at his crucifixion, the Bible says the veil of the temple was rent in two. And the Bible says that when Jesus gave his last breath, the graves were open and people came out and walked the earth. So why are they saying that he is the firstborn? of the dead, whereas we have record that others were resurrected. Well, it is saying this, and the big difference is all those who were raised, they subsequently died. They died subsequently. But Jesus, Jesus, notice well, he is leaving an example. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you get it this day. He is leaving an example to you and I to show that's the kind of resurrection that God has in mind for you and I. Yeah. That Jesus, when he arose from the dead, when he arose from the grave, he died never again. In other words, he is typifying the kind of resurrection that you and I would receive. Yeah. Now you say, Pastor Joefield, why are we talking about death? about at that time right now and I say this to you because belief determines lifestyle yeah. 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 what a man believes what a woman believes yeah. would determine yeah. how we live yeah. how we conduct ourselves yeah. you see if in your mind you recognize yes he came yes he walked the earth yes he was crucified but if in the back of your mind you're thinking that when you are dead you are finished then it would influence how you live yeah. it will influence how you spend your moments on the earth yeah. remember i said to you that life is brief yeah. life has short the question is, if you recognize that life does not end with death, then it means to say we've got to adjust our thinking yeah. and we've got to adjust our living. Yeah. And that's the message that I bring to you today. Yeah. Hey, now, secondly, and I give you this other word, I may not be able to develop it, but the first word that is used, uh, we talked about it, is the firstborn yeah. from the dead. Yeah. Can I give you another first? Here is another first. Not only does the Bible call him the firstborn from the dead, but the Bible calls him the first fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first fruit. Mm, yeah. So one dealt with the animal kingdom or dealt with humans or dealt in terms of in terms of where we talk about human beings and so forth. The other one is drawn from the plant, from the from the plant kingdom. It's talking about first fruit. Yeah. What is the first fruit? The first fruit was. And um, it is like in um, Israel is, was an agricultural economy. And let's bring it into our Trinidad setting. We have, many of us are familiar with rice. Many of us are familiar with cane, the sugar cane, even though that is, they have decided to move away from the plantation, uh, from the planting of sugar cane and so forth. And I don't have time to give you a little lecture on that. I could do that if I choose to <laughs> and tell you about in 1975 when they did, Frank Rampersad did the, the report that, that, that we could talk about that, those things. But suffice it to say that they, we are familiar with sugar cane, we are familiar with rice. What it means is that, you know, when the cane sends an arrow up, you know that type of thing, remember, we say yeah. cane is arrowing, and we have those, the younger ones are saying, what pastor cane arrowing? What is that, an arrow? No, ask granny, she will tell you a little bit more what it is. But what it simply meant is that the, 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 in, in Israel's economy, they would, refer, they would plant wheat instead of planting sugar cane. And what they would look for is the first wheat that came up. 
they would harvest that first um, sheath that was that was that protruded. In other words, it was a a a, a sheath that matured before time. Yeah. We have that with mangoes, right? Yeah. You know, the, the mango crop is supposed to come in a little later yeah. on, but somewhere in April or March, you're getting a good mango. That's like yeah. a first fruit. That is yeah. one that came before the real crop. Yeah. Well, yeah. the Bible used that. Not only does it say Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, it says Jesus is the first fruit yeah. from yeah. the dead, meaning he is one that was raised before the rest to be raised. Yeah. And I end yeah. today on that scripture with you today, First Corinthians. Are you getting anything out yeah. of this? Yeah. In other words, yeah. I am I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Yeah. And I go back again to that thing. That belief determines how we live. Yeah. Determines yeah. how we live. Here this here the scripture in the book of First. I close with that, First Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 20. Paul after he faced the objections of the people and you could read the preceding verse or get a copy of last week's message when we dealt with some of those objections that people raised i want to focus on this closing part in verse first corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 to 23 paul says these words he says but in fact christ has been raised from the dead he was raising the objections prior to that say if he has not raised then there is no resurrection for the dead and so forth. but here what he says but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of the great harvest of all who have died. Yeah. Just like when we said firstborn meant there are more to come, yeah. first fruit, everyone who understood first fruit meant, when you say first fruit, it meant that the harvest is yet to come. Yeah. And therefore yeah. Jesus, when he burst that too, when he rose from the dead, was demonstrating to you and I that the same power hear these words well you see people are struggling and trying to understand how will this thing be the apostle paul at one time says is it anything hard for you and i to recognize that j that god by his awesome power raised the dead yeah. and i want us to recognize that that jesus not only talked about it but he demonstrated that resurrection yeah. hallelujah and so here hallelujah. i close with this today yeah. it says in verse 21 so you see he says just as death came into the world through one man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun to another. It says, just as everyone dies because of, because of, uh, because of Adam, let me read that again. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, we inherited that, that Adamic nature. You know, scientists are still struggling to understand why we die. They're still struggling. Not just we, but even some of even they refer to the animal to the animal kingdom, and they're trying to understand why is death? They're dealing with the aging process, and, mm -hmm. and it just blows their mind. You could go do your research and discover that they can't seem to make sense out of this thing called death. Well, the answer to that is found in the scripture. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. The answer yeah. is because what sin entered, the Bible said, the wages of sin brought the yeah. element of yeah. death yeah. Yeah. into the biology, into the creative world. It introduced yeah. death. Yeah. They look at man and they say human beings are, not, are, are far different from material things. And, and a mechanical thing will wear. Um, you, you have an equipment that will wear, not so with the human body. It has the capacity to regenerate. That's why the cut heals. That's what things change. Yeah. Yet still we age and die. Why? Because it was never God's intention that man should die. Yeah. It was his intention that we should live for. He wired us. He designed yeah. us. That's yeah. why the psalmist David says, I'm faithfully and I'm wow. wonderfully yeah. made. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. sin has wrecked that. Yeah. But this yeah. is why Jesus, you didn't hear me today. Yeah. That is why we say to you serve him and serve him now yeah. those of you who are online with us those of you that are here this is the time that we give our lives to him yeah. and therefore i close with this as he says that he said but everyone dies because because we belong to adam but everyone who belongs to christ will be given a new life yeah. verse 23 but there is an order in this resurrection yeah. he puts it into perspective christ was raised as the first fruit then all who belong to Christ will be raised and come back with him. Amen. Isn't that, isn't God an awesome God? Hear this, at the end of chapter, at the end of the 15th chapter, at the end of chapter 15, Paul closes with this verse. He says this. He says, so now dear brothers and sisters, be strong 
and be unmovable or immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing that you do for the Lord will ever be useless. The King James says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Hear that again. Hear it again. Be unmovable. When does he say that? He introduces that last line at the end of his argument, his, his discussion on the whole issue of life after death. He's saying, come on, brothers and sisters, it has been the plan of the devil to make you feel that you just live and after you're finished, after you close your eyes, that's it. But he says, I want you to know that there is life after death. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah, says, yeah, as yeah. a result, he says, I want you to be steadfast. Yeah, yeah. Somebody listening to me today, you had dropped your hands. You had said, God, what's the sense with serving you? You had been through many difficult seasons in your life. Can you stand with me today? You've been through many difficult seasons and you're saying, God, what's the use? Somebody's just saying, what's the use? But here the word comes, he says, be steadfast. Be, steadfast. Be unmovable. Amen. He says always abounding. In other words, not just serving God half-heartedly, not just living for your family half-heartedly. But let me say this, because some people say, I'm living for my family, but they exclude God out of it. This has never been God's plan that we exclude him. You live for your family by living first and foremost for God. Yeah. You've got to give your life to him. Yeah. Yeah. Belief determines lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. What I believe, and I'm not just talking about what we say with our mouth, I'm talking about what we have accepted in our my psyche. Yeah. I believe that there's coming a day when I'll see my Lord face to face. Mm -hmm. Belief, here these words, belief determines lifestyle. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that Jesus, oh God, not only walked this earth, not only performed miracles, but the Bible says he laid his life down. But he didn't stay there. He said, he boldly says, I've got the power to lay my life down and take it back up again. And we are so glad because he lay, we can live too. We can live also. May your word touch the lives of men and women, individuals that are here today, locked in and saying, God, I recognize I need to make a change. I pray that your hands would rest upon them. I pray a second prayer today. I pray for those who have been walking with you, God, and they've become weary and, and they began to waver and say, God, what's the use? I leave that word again with them. Be steadfast, yes. be unmovable, mm -hmm. always abounding yes. in the work of the Lord. Yes. May God's grace rest upon you. You've been here, you were here with us, you've heard the word. And you say, Pastor, do you feel I, I want to make a change in my life? I, I want to I want to surrender my life to God. Yes. Um, hey, this is a great moment. I, as we are speaking, I just sense his, his grace, that power to change, that power to deliver, that power to heal. If you give him a chance, he will do it for you. Don't forget, tune in next week. We talk about the God who has the power to resurrect. Yes. Let me say this to you. He doesn't only resurrect you when we are dead, resurrect our bodies when we are dead, but even now dead situations that you might be facing. Tune in with us next week and see what God will do. I sense his presence. She call you. Father, just set lies. Men and women across this, wherever they are, just, just release that grace. I release that grace today to bring change and deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Richard. Because he lives. Hallelujah. I confess tomorrow because he lives hallelujah all my fears they're gone mm. and because I know he holds my future, my life is worth the living just because Christ lives. Hallelujah. He makes all the difference. Thank you for joining us. 
If you were encouraged to give your life to Christ, were blessed by the word, or reaffirmed your commitment to Christ, we would like to hear from you. You can contact us via email at votm500 at gmail.com or via our Facebook page, Voice of Triumph Ministries. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified when we upload new messages. We would love to have you join us at one of our services on Sundays from 2 p.m. at the Bamboo Duncan Village Community Centre Naramin or Thursdays from 7 p.m. at the same venue. God bless you and see you next time.